In today's video, we're going to be setting up an automation that adds new leads into our sales pipeline and then follows up with that lead based on whether they're a good fit for working with us. I'm so excited because we get to use one of my favorite tools, Relay.app. Not only is this tool incredibly user-friendly, but it comes with this human in the loop feature that allows us to automate with a little bit more control, ensuring we can add human elements throughout the workflow. Before building this out from scratch, let's just do a quick overview of the automation itself. So I've called this one adding leads to sales pipeline. It is triggered whenever I receive an email and I have a filter set up on this so that it's not just any email, it's any email where the subject line contains form submission business ops inquiries. So this is a form that is on my website, on my sales page. Whenever it's filled out, I will receive this email and that's how I know that I've got a new lead. Now you might be using a different form software, that's fine as long as you receive the email and you have a way to filter through that in your Gmail account through the subject line or something mentioned in the body, we can use that as the trigger. And then from there, I'm using chat GPT to extract the key information about that lead add them to my sales pipeline and then I want to decide what to do with that lead. So I don't want to say yes to everyone because that would mean setting up a lot of sales calls and I don't want to waste the leads time or my time if we're not a good fit. So this is where it really comes in handy because they have this human in the loop feature that basically sends a message to a Slack channel and says, do you want to accept this lead? And I have three different options, three paths that they can take. Yes, if I want to accept the lead. No, if it's not a good fit. And then waitlist if I'm at full capacity. So based on my input here, it's going to filter that lead through and then take the next step. So if it's a yes, it will send them a lead to book a sales call with me and add them to my contacts database. If it's a no, it's going to create a draft email with some resources and add a task to my tasks database to say, you need to follow up with this lead. And if it's waitlist, then it's going to send an email to that lead, letting them know that they have been added to my waitlist. So I'm going to walk you through setting this up from scratch so that you're able to either set it up exactly how I have, or if you have a different workflow, you'll then have the skills to customize it and make it your own. Now I'm using three different Notion databases to create this automation. I'm using my sales pipeline, my task database, and my contacts database. Now, if you don't currently have those set up, but would like to follow along, they are all included as part of my free Notion starter kit. So I'll include a link. You can always sign up and access those and that will give you a head start. So the first thing you're going to want to do is sign up for a Relay account. And you could do this by going to chloefarbsk.com forward slash really. Once you are logged in, you will see on the sidebar this option to manage apps. So if you click here, and all you have to do is click connect to connect your applications and you will just be prompted to log in and that will create that connection. Once we have done that, we can come back out and we can click on workflows, select new workflow. So the first thing we need to do is set up our trigger. So I'm going to click add trigger, search for Gmail. And you'll see here, you could do email received or label added. So if you want it to be prompted when they are added to a label such as lead, you can always use this as your trigger. I'm going to select email received and I'm going to add a filter, choose subject and I'm going to say contains form submission, business ops inquiries. And you'll see here it's pulled in a couple of examples from my Gmail account. So I will select done. Now we have our trigger set up, we can select add step. And here is where you can decide if you want to use Relay's built in AI. You'll have the basic model here with set number of AI credits based on your plan. It looks exactly the same. Or you can click on the drop down and you can connect any AI account. So I'm going to use open AI and I'm going to use Ch chat GBT4. And then here is where we're going to input our prompt. 
Now this prompt is going to look different based on what you're collecting from your project inquiry form. But for context, this is my prompt. So I've said specifically extract the following and then I have a number of bullet points that match the questions on my project inquiry form on my website. And I've included each bullet point should be a separate header with a clear line break between each item. Project details should be broken down into clear paragraphs with spacing. And the reason for that is I do have a property that I want to fill in called project inquiry notes. And when I don't include this, it just ends up in one big messy jumbled paragraph. So this was tweaking on the AI prompt to make it work for me. Now, the other thing to mention here is one of the bullet points I include is first name. So I have got full name here, but I've also pulled first name only. And that's so that I can use that when I'm sending emails. So if I'm sending an email, I don't want to say hi, full name. I want to say hi, first name. So I've included that as its own separate bullet point. And you'll see how that works as we move along in this process. So as we scroll down, we can then add additional context. And then for output, I'm going to start adding fields that I want to track. So I'm going to click add field. And here we're basically mapping the bullet points to text or the various property types. So if I select text, this one will be full name. And I want to make sure this little box is checked. I'll add another field and this will be my first name. So these are the data outputs that we're collecting from this prompt. And then I'm just going to start mapping these different bullet points. So I'll come down here, add a field. If I go to more types, there's some different options here. So I will select email address. I've got location here. For website, we have a URL property. And then we have a few more text properties. So I'll skip through those. Now, when it comes to this budget option, this is a drop down on my website. It's also a select property in my Notion sales pipeline. So for this one, I'm going to do single select, paste in the question, and then I'm going to add my various choices in here. Once I've added all those properties in, I'll select save. And then here you can decide what you want to do if the model returns an error. So do you want to continue and try and complete the workflow or do you want it to fail? So I'm going to select fail because I can't go any further if this doesn't work. Then I can test this step. So I'll select test and you'll see here that it fails on its first try. And if we view technical details, it's because there's not any information. So we're not working with an email right now. So if you get this error when you first add it, don't worry, what you're going to do is hit done. And what you don't do is hit pause on the part of the video where you record how to fix the issue, which is exactly what I did. And now I'm editing this video and I'm like, where is that part where I, I fix the issue? I missed it out by accident, my bad, but I'm going to show you how to solve it now. So in front of me, you've got the finished automation. That's where we'll be in just a few steps. But the way I fixed that issue was I came into the second step, the prompt. And what I done is I just gone too fast. And where I said, add additional context, you can add the email. I didn't do that. So I need to add this object, email, hit done, and that fixed my issue for me. Now you're much smarter than me and you'll not miss that step when you're putting together your automation. But now we have it fixed, let's go back to the video where I show you the next step. And you'll see here that works all correctly. So we can move on to the next step now. And my next step is that I want to add this to my Notion sales pipeline. So we'll select this plus icon to add the next step. I'm going to search for Notion, add page to database, select my sales pipeline database. You might have to search for it. And you'll see here, you can add content to the page itself. I have a template set up in Notion for that. So I'm gonna leave that blank, but I do want to populate some fields. So under fields to populate, I'm going to select add field, and then I'm going to just map each property. So my first property in Notion, the one that's by default name, I've renamed this to opportunity. So I'm going to add the opportunity property and then where it says add text, if I scroll along, find this blue plus icon, click here, 
go to step number two, my AI output, and I'm going to select full name. So I've mapped that to this field. Then we're going to add another field now and we're going to just start mapping all of these different properties. So I have a date property for initial contact. For this one, I'm going to use a reference date and I'm going to do it as the email send time. So in this instance, I'm going to step number one, send time, save. I'll map my next field. So we'll do email. And again, I'm just going to click, go to AI output number two, select email. And I'm going to do this for all of my different properties and all of those different data outputs. So we have website, location, budget. For stage, I'm going to manually select new lead. And then for offer interest, I know this is on my business ops sales page. So I'm going to manually select my offer as business ops. And then the last property that I want to add is project inquiry notes. And this one is a little bit different. So for this one, I'm going to paste in a template I've created of just text. And here I'm going to map various different properties. So service requested, this is always the same. For timing, I'm going to take this placeholder out, click the plus icon, go to step two and map it to the deadline about business. I'm going to take this briefly describe placeholder out and I'm going to do briefly describe your business. How did you find me? Map that. The how did you find me? Location and I have a property for that but I like to add it in here too. And for project details I usually start with the budget, hit enter and then I will add the what do you hope to achieve and then under additional comments and questions I'm going to map that to additional comments and questions. So now I've got a full overview of this new project request and this is just helpful in Notion so that I can at a glance see everything but it's also helpful for the next step that we're going to take and I'll show you how. So if we select done, so now I've added that lead to my sales pipeline and here's where things get really interesting and where I fall in love with really because I don't want to say yes to every lead that comes through and just send them a link to book a sales call. If we're not a good fit, that's wasting everybody's time. So instead, I want to have some input in what happens next and I can use Relay's human in the loop feature to do this. So how this works is we'll click the plus icon. I'll select human in the loop and I'm going to choose get data input. So here I could choose if I want to send a request over email, Slack DM or Slack channel. I like to use Slack DM, but just to show you a variation, we're going to do Slack channel. I will select the channel. So in this case, I set one up called testing and we're going to use that. I can now add a message. So this is the message that I'm going to receive when my input is required. And what I like to do here is I could say new lead, can always add an emoji too. I'll hit enter. I'm going to click this plus data button at the bottom right corner here. And then for step number three, I'm going to find that project inquiry notes property and add that in here. And because I added all of the context into that one property, I can now see everything at a glance when that message comes through in Slack. Now under data requested, it's going to ask for my input. So I need to decide what steps we take. So I'm going to click add data input, go to more types. And in this instance, I'm going to choose single select. And that's because I have three different choices. So I will call this accept lead question mark. And then my choices are going to be yes, no, and I'll put resources in brackets in case I can offer those. And then I'm also going to do one called waitlist. So if I'm at capacity, that lead can be added to a waitlist. My default value, I'm going to choose yes, and then I'm going to require input. Hit save. And I can also select a due date here, set a reminder after the initial notification. 
You can see a preview if you select a page in here and it will send yourself an example. And then we also have escalation behavior. So if an action, take an action if the step is not submitted, so you can notify the run owner and you can choose a behavior. So no escalation, skip and continue to the next skip, step or end the run. So for me, I'm doing no escalation. We'll select done. Once I've added that data input, it could then go one of three ways. It could be yes, no, or waitlist. So what we're going to do is select the plus icon again and select flow control this time. And we're going to select rule based path. So path A is going to be yes. And our path rule is get data input. So we're taking it from here, accept lead. And here we want to say is one of yes. So that's going to go into that flow. I will close this for now. I'm going to select path B, select if no other path is selected. And I'm going to change this. So I'm going to rename this as no resources. And where it says path rules, follow this path when rules match, add a rule, data input. So accept lead is one of no. So I'm going to close that now. And then I'm going to add another option, path C, and we'll call this waitlist. And follow this path when the rules match, add rule, accept lead is one of waitlist. So now, based on whatever I enter in here, it's going to take that lead down a different path. So if we go back to yes, what we want to do is send an email. So I'm going to select Gmail, send email, and I've got send from myself, but you can also send as somebody else in your account. Two, so for this email, I'm going to go to step two, and I'm gonna pull from the email. And then I'm going to add my subject line and body. So here I've just added my template. My subject line is thank you for your business ops inquiry. And then I've got hi, I've got my message, a link to book a sales call with me. Now I don't want to just say hi, nobody. So this is where we can click on this data tab again. And in step two, we pulled just the first name and that's where that comes in handy. So when we're sending emails, we could say hi, first name. You can also add attachments and labels here. So say you had a label for leads, you could tag that in there. And say you had an attachment, maybe a services and pricing guide, you could add that in here as well. Now with all of these steps, you can test them as you go. We're just gonna go ahead and do it at the end. But once you have tested it and you're happy with it, select done. And then the next step in this is I want to add them to my contacts database. So we'll select the plus icon, search for Notion again. And then this time I'm going to do create or update a page because a lead might come in that I'm already connected with. So I'm going to select this option here, search for my database, so contacts database. Then it will say check for existing page. So I'm going to configure a connection and I'm going to pull by email. So I'm gonna say email, and you could do it as exactly or contains, and I'm gonna click this plus icon, and I'm going to say it matches this email here. And if not, it's going to add a new contact. So you can add different criteria, so you could say contains first name or full name if you wanted as well. I'm just sticking to email, because that usually works for me. So fields to populate, I can then go in and add the various fields. So it would be contact name, I would put full name in here. So I'll go to step two, tag the full name, email, we'll tag their email. For relationship, I would select lead because this is a property in my Notion database. And then we'll do a website. And then for first contact, again, I'm going to pull from when I initially received the email. So step one, email, send time, hit save. And then I'm also going to select sales opportunities. Now this is a relation I have connected my contacts database to my 
sales pipeline database. And this is that relation here. So what's nice is because I've added that lead in up at the top here for step three, is I can tag that page. So we can tag step three here, and now the two are connected. Again, you can test this if you want, or you can just hit done and do it at the end. Yes is now all configured. Now I need to set up our no path. And this one's a little bit different. I don't want to just send an email. I could do this if you have like a no template and you're happy to do that, you can. In this instance, I prefer to send a customized email with reasons why I don't think we're a good fit and hopefully provide some helpful resources to match that specific leads needs. So in that instance, it's easier for me to just set up a draft and then give myself a task to follow up. So here we're going to add a step, search for Gmail again. And this time we're going to create a draft. Send as myself. And then two, again, we want to map that to step two, the email that's been pulled. You can send a copy to yourself if you want here. You can add a label if you want. And again, we want to add the subject, body and attachments. To select that data, output two and pull from the first name there. So once that draft has been created, I'll select done. I'm going to add another step. Now, one thing that's important here, because it's easy to do, is we're not selecting this big plus. When we're in a tab, we're looking for the last step, hovering over and looking for this blue line with the little blue plus icon. That means it's part of this tab here. So then we're going to search for Notion, add page to database. This time I'm selecting my task database. And again, you can add content if you want. I just want to populate the fields. So we'll add a field and I'm just going to do the same steps of mapping the data as needed. So for task, I'm going to say follow up with new lead, click the plus icon, and I'm going to put full name here. So follow up with new lead and I'm going to tag the full name. And then again, I'm just going to map different properties here. So for date, I'm going to pull this one from the workflow run and current date and time. I have a property in my task database for department, so this would be sales. Status, I'm going to say captured, priority first. And then here again, I've got a relation to my sales pipeline. So I could tag the relevant deal from step three. If I wanted to test, I could, or I'm just gonna select done. And that would be my no path complete. For waitlist, similar thing, add a step, we'll do Gmail, send email, output would be step two, the email that we pulled, and again, add in the subject and the body, add in data for the first name, so step two, first name, and you could do that in the subject line as well. So you could do thank you for your business inquiry, first name, and that would work just as well add any attachments and labels, test if you want and hit done. Now, if I also wanted to add this person to my contacts rather than go through that whole process again, I'm just going to go to yes, click on the three dots on step six, duplicate this, hit done because everything's the same. I'm gonna drag this down so it's out of the yes tab, go to my wait list and I'm gonna drag this in and under. So now we have it set up so that if I select yes, they will be sent an email and added to my contacts. If it's a no, they will create a draft and I will get a task telling me I have to go send that email. And if it's on waitlist, they will automatically be sent an email and added to my contacts. So the last thing we need to do is hit publish here, select publish. And then we're going to do a test run to see exactly how this works. So I'm going to select test run here. It will look for an email to pull. I'll select create test run, start run. And you'll see here it stops when it gets to submit data input. So now we're gonna go into Slack and you'll see here this new lead has come through. I've got all of the key information I need to make that decision. So I'm going to select fill out data input. See, I've got my options, yes, no, wait list. So I'm going to select yes hit submit, and you'll see here, this has been completed and it's run successfully. But we want to double check, make sure everything worked. So the first thing we're going to do is click on our sales pipeline page, 
select open page and you'll see here all of that information has been added successfully so the next thing we want to do is go back to really we'll close this and we will check our contacts next so you'll see here if you hover over you can open the page and you'll see here it's added all of that information into my contacts and if I go into my sent emails you'll see here it sent that email successfully and I can also check it's been received successfully as well so if I come into my personal email which is where I sent this you'll see here I've now received it and I can click on that link to book a sales call now that all worked which is awesome if you do run into any issues I want to go over a few of the common ones that I see and especially with this automation but you'll find that this is helpful for all automations. So the first one is in your instant trigger where we've got email received. I've got subject line contains and I've got this um, data here. Now, if I add a space to the end of that, all of my examples disappear. So you want to match it exactly and be mindful of spacing. So if I take that space away, it pulls in the email again. So be aware of that. And it may be a case of doing contains and you're just taking a small amount. You have to tweak it until you see an example show up here. That will let you know it's working. The other thing is with the prompt. So I've got all of these bullet points. You want to make sure that these bullet points exactly match the data output here. So it knows exactly what information goes where. And I don't know if I said this clearly in building this out, but under additional context, make sure that you've tagged the email so that it's pulling from the email because otherwise it doesn't always find that information. It needs to know what it's working with. So those are the most common issues. If you run into another error, it's usually pretty good about telling you where you've gone wrong and that makes it a little bit easier to figure out how to fix it. And the great thing about Really is that it is very user friendly. Whenever you make a change, you'll want to hit publish and you can always start a new test run if you want as well. Just be mindful that this will use up your AI credits, whether you're using your own open AI account, an alternative, AI account or the built-in one that comes with really in your subscription level. The final thing we're going to do is rename this email. So I've got it as Gmail email received. That's not very helpful. So we'll click in this and we'll rename this to add leads to sales pipeline. That will then appear under workflows here. This is the example that I showed you at the beginning, but it's the first one that we're working with. And we want to click on the three dots. I would probably add this to my sales folder, or you can create a new folder down here and set it up that way as well. I hope this has been helpful and it's encouraged you to take the next step in setting up automations because it really can save you so much time and energy. I mean, it's going to take you the length of this video, maybe a little bit longer to set this up, but think about how much time it will save you in the coming days, weeks, months, and even year. Not only does this give you time freedom, but that human in the loop feature brings so much reassurance because you can now start automating without compromising on that human element. If you try this, I wanna hear how you get on. If you have questions, please leave them for me. And if you have any requests for other automations that you would like me to create using it really, let me know and I'll do my best to make that happen.